This episode is brought to you by Bulletproof Script Coverage, where screenwriters go to get their scripts read by top Hollywood professionals. Learn more at CoverMyScreenplay.com. I'd like to welcome to the show Jonathan Perry, brother. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. Thank you for having me. Um, it's uh, it's not often I get such a young filmmaker on the show, you know. So I'm excited to talk to you about not only your success, your process, and uh, and the future of of where you're going. So uh, thanks so much, man. Thank you. So, so what? Uh, first of all, how did you get started uh, filmmaking? Like, because uh, how old are you again? I am 17 right now. Okay, so first I'm just yeah. going to get this out for everyone listening to you. We all hate you, so understand that right away because – no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> because when I was 17, I didn't even know about filmmaking yet, but you were raised in a world where it's all around you. So I'm dying to know how you actually got started, how long ago you got started uh, in the in, yeah. in just getting started on your, on your journey. Yeah, uh, so it was started about four years ago, um, and I was really just – 13, uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do through high school, somehow thinking advanced into life in general. But um, I knew that uh, I wanted to go into a creative field. So um, after just filming videos with friends, really, um, I eventually stumbled upon like this subreddit of just teaching about short films and all that. And through that, I actually started writing my first short film script and uh it kind of went downhill from there and we really um i wrote close to probably at least uh 60 i would say film scripts and then uh i really got serious into that and uh i knew that in the beginning i wanted to actually uh shoot a movie but uh of course it would have to be a short film to start off with and i wanted to get into the industry as fast as possible but that I actually discovered that I could sell my short film scripts online. And so I really started taking classes and educating myself. And I really wanted to get on set and actually uh, feel around to see which, because I knew I wanted to go into film production. I just didn't know what department, how I wanted to enter, in the, in, enter into the industry. And if I wanted to be a director, editor, script writer, really wanted to, what I really liked in the uh, filmmaking process. So starting off as a uh, script writer and selling that, I really got uh, down to the last two years where I sold about 40 film scripts at that point. And through selling those film scripts uh, online, I would copyright them. Uh, and I remember my first short film script that I sold, I had a copyright on it. And the guy's like, what do I have to pay to get that copyright off and for me to produce it? So I was selling to people that were like me when I started, where I just didn't want to uh, write a script. I just wanted to shoot a movie. I didn't know what I was doing. So really, uh, I, there's a market there for people that actually just uh, want to shoot a movie and don't. Uh, maybe they just want to go through a writer. And what they do is they take my name off that copyright. They put it on their name, and they go and shoot their movie all around the world. So, I mean... I've seen, uh, I think it was 13 productions so far off my short films, anywhere from Australia to Ireland. Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird to see. Um, I'll see a trailer. I'll be in connected with the directors, but I can't be affiliated with the movie itself because so, I so you're my basic Okay, so you're basically, you have no copyright. And not only copyright, but you get no credit for the film. No, no. Uh, oh, so you literally are ghostwriting. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, Holy but I mean. <laughs> All the while, it's it's. I remember it's all an education purpose, really. When I think about it, because uh, I remember it was the first summer where I like, I knew I wanted to take classes online to educate myself before I really took a summer and I spent it writing short film scripts and selling them. So I took master classes from like Aaron Storkin online and all that, um, just trying to educate myself on uh, how to perfect the craft and actually get better at it. But I figured out that even through a um, like $150 copyright, then you had to go through, I did $100 revisions where I sent it to someone and then they would send it back and uh, I'd put it online and sell it. But you subtract that from the profit. And then um, basically, I, they're really buying my idea, not the script. So that's what my copyright's on, really, the idea. So 
Um, that's what's great about it. And uh, I mean, it's my I, my, I come from a family of inventors, actually. Uh, my mom was the youngest uh, inventor in the world, or a woman inventor in the world, um, mm-hmm. back when she was younger and she uh, invented the glow sheet. So, I mean, uh, I come from a really creative and supportive family where uh, my mom saw me doing this and uh, she really supported that flow of ideas and all that uh, going into all these film scripts. And um, so uh, that's really where I had a giant portfolio of film scripts that I had sold. And I had some that I didn't sell because they were just not good enough. But those, um, there was uh, one on the market that was uh, offered because they go up for bidding, so it's not at a set price. All right, so, so stop for a second, so slow down, because this is absolutely, I thought I've heard everything. I've been in this business 25 years. I've thought I've heard every single hustle I had in the film business, and you are shocking me right now. So, so I want to clarify this for a second. So you wrote 40 to 60 short film scripts. Uh, yes. You self-educated yourself by watching online courses because obviously you can't go to film school yet because you're literally still in high school and you literally yeah. got the day off of school today to do this interview. Uh, correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So then you start, you find a way to sell these scripts in an auction-based set- setting. What auction, where where did you auction these off? So it's not like eBay. It's more sure. of on like a blog, but it's, mm-hmm. uh, I, it's a, I didn't, I didn't go searching for that blog. It was like a blog inside of a blog. It was deep and not the dark web, but uh, it was. <laughs> I was about to say, you're selling deep. these on the dark web. That's all. The, that's perfect. Uh, that's a perfect uh, add to this story. This itself is a short film or a feature film story just in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it was deep into like the filmmaking uh, type of blogs. And um, so people would just uh, comment with their rates and eventually they would range from around 600 to $800 per script. Um, and eventually I worked myself up to like, in a summer I earned like close to 10 grand and I put That's it into a PayPal insane. account. Um, that is, I mean, I, I, first of all, I got to respect the hustle, man. That is, I mean, I sold, you know, DVDs and I was doing garage sales when I was 13 years old. I wasn't writing screenplays. So I, man, I respect the it, hustle. It definitely, it was a, out of all the summers, I mean, um, of course, counting vacations and all that, but I mean, uh, just, I literally spent the summer in my room just writing these scripts, thinking it out, playing it. I would actually physically at some points play it out. And I remember I, in like almost, I think I fractured part of my hand because I punched the floor so hard. Um, uh, and actually, um, I mean, these scripts really, I had to make sure that I was, um, I really isolated myself and got into these short film scripts. And I think that's what people bought them for because they saw that uh, emotional connection connected to them and how much work that went into it. Um, you did deep and, work. Basically, you were doing some deep work on these things. You like locked yourself yeah. into a room basically and, and cut yourself off from everything so you can actually work as opposed to checking Facebook every five minutes or Instagram or anything like that. You literally just focused on the work. What a, what a, what a concept. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I have, I mean, qu- but I have to ask you a, a question because, you know, as a writer myself, and and also as working with so many writers and filmmakers over the years, there's something that always creeps in, which is something we like to call ego, and ego is constantly creeping into the filmmaking process. Yeah. And you, at such a young age were willing to not only give one of your scripts away, but sell a lot of them away without credit, which many people, including myself, if you would have told me this when you were doing it, I personally would have advised you against it. I'd be like, dude, at least keep your name on it. Like why, you know, just be a writer for hire. Like why are you like literally ghostwriting? But I guess you got a higher price because you were ghostwriting because then people could take credit for your work. And, I guess, um, right? I also, I also saw where these people were coming from because, of course, when you're – some of these people were already just getting into the industry and they really wanted to make something. So making that process easier for them is helping them along with me. So it's really a win-win. Um, that's amazing. And that's what I like about it. Um, so so, so you, never, it, you never had a moment where you're like, hey, this is, my, this is mine. I wrote this. 
I've got to do this. This is I got to have my name on it. You never had a moment like that. That wasn't part of your strategy. Uh, I mean, the only time I had that was actually with the short film that I made, and that was Subnivian, uh, because I did have a list of films that I knew were the best, and I was offered uh, the most that I've ever been offered, four grand for Subnivian. That made me turn my head at a script and actually take another look at it. For a short film? Like, that's insane. Like, I don't... You you, have, you understand something. You are blowing my mind because I have never heard of anyone selling a short film script before, let alone at the rate or volume that you did. Uh, I didn't even know there was a market for this. So for all these writers listening out there, there is a market for people to buy short films uh, and short film scripts, which doesn't take nearly as much time as writing a feature film script. So I'm assuming yeah. you can knock out a 10-page good short film script in a lot less time than writing a full feature script. Yeah, I remember my producer did like the mathematics of it. And if I were to, um, I'm not writing them now since I have my hands full with some Nivian, but if a writer were to flip short film scripts each week on a $500 basis and they took around four months off and, uh, and, and and I counted that for school and stuff because I wanted to make it into my scenario. But like four months off as far as workflow, a full job, uh, nine to five, um, you could be making around 80 grand a year just off of um, flipping it each week and um, just uh, getting revisions and taking out profits and all that. So it's there's definitely a market and it's growing for that because um, you're doing the work that people like directors – that are upcoming in the industry or don't have those writers connections Mm -hmm. really can reach out to and uh, start on their next short film. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. So, I mean, it's, that's such an insane story, man. Like I told you, I've, I thought I've heard it all. So it's not often that you should, you, someone can shock me with a new angle at things. So this is, Pretty mind blowing. Now, I really want to talk about real quick your daily routine because I want people to understand what you did and how you did it. So, what was the daily routine to actually get this volume of work done, and then also to get it out into this marketplace? So, I was literally, um, I did have a nine to five job that would work. Uh, most of the work was done in the summer, so I would just wake up. I would, uh, I really just had a book of ideas as far as uh, when I did the script writing processes. I had a book of ideas where I would just write it down and any time they came to me, I would jot it down. So even if I was at work, I would have something to go home and write to. And um, usually you structure it out. Um, What I did was uh, in all my films, I make sure that there's no loose ends. There can't be any questioning. The audience really has to, uh, it's got to be a solid film concept wise. So uh, what I do is structure it out in a bird's eye view view. there is a new method that uh, came out after that was actually called the story clock uh, mm-hmm. method where it's you have bird's eye view and you structure it out. Um, and if you Google that, you can find out the concept, but you're basically making sure that your film is all tied off on uh, the concept and all of the elements story wise. But the writing process, I would just, it was basically a, um, Literally, you wake up each morning, you write scripts till twelve, fall asleep, and do it again. Um, you would wa- you was, would work you would work a nine to five doing it, or you would like oh, work no. all day, or you I were working work another day. job. Uh, uh, I would also, of course, when I got home, it's not like I'm watching TV, but I'm just um, going right to script writing uh, whenever I get a chance. So uh, that's amazing. Nowadays, uh-huh. uh, uh, I. When we got that Subnivian, I saw that someone offered me four grand. I, of course, decided, hey, I'm going to put this into production. And that was about a year and a half ago. So with Subnivian, not only did we have to do extensive revisions uh, uh, on the script itself, even though it was a really solid concept, I wanted to make sure it was perfection. So um, as far as the getting it into production was the hardest part I could have imagined and I didn't know how I would have done it Uh, but the first thing I uh, did really was I planned out the whole shoot I said what do we have to have as far as uh, Subnivian's based in a winter setting and we have to have frozen ice conditions for that setting 
So of course that lint narrows it down. First it's finding the location, then tailoring. I knew that I could gather college students, industry professionals based on that location. So I took that location and I it pointed me up north to Marquette, which is uh, a few miles off the Canadian border, way up there in Michigan. So I needed to have a 100% chance that it would be freezing conditions when we were shooting and no risk of anything happening. So uh, I first reached out to the college out there in Marquette. They sent over a producer and a few other crew members out of their cinema classes that were about to go out in the industry. And I also, uh, the Michigan Film Commission website is a blessing. Um, they have a basically a directory of any person in the film industry that lives in Michigan. So, mm-hmm. and they have phone numbers and all that. So I called about like 300 people um, over the course of like three weeks. I love and, this story. Uh, I just love, I'm sorry, I just, I just love this story. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and that, for me, um, originally uh, towards the first start of my high school, I was kind of more of a shyer type. So, I mean, calling up these people, it's, it's like, you want to do what up in Marquette? You want to shoot this? Because they took a look at the script. This script is the biggest scale script I've ever written as far as production-wise. Like, mm-hmm. it's a blockbuster size set that you would have to pull up to actually shoot the movie. So, I mean, it wasn't that uh, I wanted to go for an ambition aspect. I knew that if this is pulled off my way, uh, all practical, it's going to be the best short film no matter what. So basically all that came into effect. And I hired these people under contracts that I made myself. And then... Um, How did you make your contracts by yourself? A lot of legal research. Um, so you... Oh my God, this is like... I, I, the story just keeps getting deeper and deeper. I absolutely I love this. So then you... you which is generally not advisable. Don't write your own contracts. Always have an attorney, but you didn't have a chance to do it. And on a short film basis, you were probably okay. okay. I, but, I was able to get uh, some legal feedback, of course, online. There's um, sure like a rocket a lawyer. Or something I mean, like nowadays uh, you can do anything. I was still in my room, just uh, calling up online lawyers to take a look at the contracts. So, I mean, basically crazy. during that time also, my parents were uh, really starting to recognize that, hey, this script thing is evolving into actually something that is going to be shot into a movie. So they really, uh, I could see that they were questioning my commitment, even though, because they don't see all the stuff behind the scenes. They see me on a computer typing all day. So sorry, I'm getting over a cold, but. Uh, no worries, no worries. Basically, um, they don't see any pro- they don't see a product coming out of all this. They see it all online. Um, it's all digital money too. It's not like I'm having stacks of cash in my room. Right. But um, they, I could see them questioning it. So I knew that I had to brand myself as a filmmaker, actually, to take get more industry professionals to join the project and take me seriously. Not only the industry professionals, but um, anyone that looks at me making this movie is going to question, how are you going to pull this off? You're absolutely right. I would be the first one to say, like, uh, you have good intentions, but how are you've never done this before. How are you pulling it off? Did you shoot any short films prior to this or nothing? No, no. This is my uh, first um, official short film. But um, I knew that I had to research, of course, the whole process. People that have shot short films before I had to reach out for their advice. I met a lot of people through the Michigan Film Commission, uh, phone calling, Netflix producers, uh, stunt coordinators. At one point, I was talking to one of the assistants for like a blockbuster movie like Batman vs. Superman. Mm-hmm. He told me not to shoot the film, though, because it was too dangerous. Uh, oh, and I, okay. I, it could not be pulled off uh, at all. So... Um, Basically, I did receive a lot of rejection and uh, doubts from the film community. Uh, 
How did you go? And the industry. Uh, but how did you break through that, man? Because I mean, most of I mean, people definitely, especially so young, when you get beat up by nose, 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 you can't do this. That's dangerous. That's crazy. What made you keep going? What was the thing inside you just said, I, I just I'm not gonna let go of this? Well, uh, I uh, I digress back to when I was trying to prove my uh, to other people that I could do this. Um, I also wanted to prove to myself that hey, um, I'm really going to commit to this, uh, producing this movie, and actually commit to um, this film career and making sure that this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. So um, I hung out of a helicopter over Pittsburgh and got B-roll of the um, city and sold it online for half the price that it usually is on stock footage. But... Um, I had I knew I had to do something to brand myself, and I actually made a website and all that. Um, behind me um, right. is one of the websites. So um, people saw that and saw that, hey, if he's going to pull off something like that, he's going to pull off this film if it's even a bigger scale. So it's all about getting leverage as far as even um, writing short film scripts was my first step. Then you can uh, do something bold at least – in my case, I knew I had to just to get people's attention. So I did that B-roll over Pittsburgh. And so the next step was Subnivian. So it's all about showing people these leverage steps, no matter how big or small. So, so okay, so now you, you, you shot this thing, which I'm assuming it was an adventure in itself, wasn't it? Just shooting this thing. Yeah, yeah it was... Um, Originally, uh, we had to get to Pittsburgh. Um, I did it with a friend, and I originally, my parents didn't know about it until I went on a class trip to over to Italy, and then I launched the website and everything, and then they saw the video of me hanging out of the helicopter, and they're like, okay, let's take another look at this. He's obviously seriously about this. And so, oh, oh, so wait a minute. So the footage of you hanging out the helicopter... You sold that footage or you sold the footage that you actually shot? The footage that I actually shot. Because originally, you... um, aerial B-roll over city is very expensive. It can go for like $200, but I just sold it for $100 and sold more quantity over uh, quality. But I right. mean, it was okay. And so then uh, you had, okay, so you, you, you did that and then you actually branded yourself as, you put, your, you put someone to take a picture of you, obviously, or video yeah. of you. So people would go, wait a minute, he's crazy enough to hang outside of a helicopter. He might be able to pull this off. Is basically your mentality? Uh, my mentality is, yeah, he's, uh, if I'm he's, willing to hang out of a helicopter, people are going to take me more uh, seriously as far as producing this film. And it would, uh, actually, I'll be able to have content for my website and all that stuff, uh, social media. I branded myself anywhere. You can follow me on Jonathan Perry Films on Instagram. Uh, the website itself, and um, so uh, I really tried to uh, make it aware that if people are going to sign with me, they're going to be uh, dealing with someone that's actually going to go for it and take something serious as far as this film. So uh, getting all the crew was, uh, once I had the producers signed on, some industry, I had one industry and one um, college, they were able to find all the rest of the crew uh, through college connections. These college kids are right about to get in the industry. So they're local. The shooting area, eight hours away from me up there. Mm -hmm. So um, we had everything arranged up there. And we planned out pre-production with Skype calls. Every night I was hours on end, Skype calling, stunt coordinators, all that. We did everything practical. We didn't know... Um, VFX uh, in it, really, and we're only doing, uh, er, we're not doing uh, CGI in it, so, mm -hmm. so uh, it's we're all only practical. doing effects. Yeah. Um, doing practical effects as opposed to high-end CGI or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, I took, one of my favorite filmmakers is Christopher Nolan, and mm -hmm. um, I like how he takes that practical effect, and it, you can definitely tell. Oh, God, yeah. With any uh, even if it's the best CGI that people get paid millions for, that you can tell, the eye can tell at least. And until uh, 
that evolves, and I'm sure it will. Uh, eventually, we'll get to uh, some really good CGI. Um, but for now, I'm doing it all practical, and it makes the film quality a lot better too. So, um, and so yeah, so you 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 made this short film, then you get a, a deal with this small little startup up company called Amazon. Uh, <laughs> how did you get a deal with Amazon off of a short film? So we shot the movie, um, and that was over a four-day shoot uh, up in Marquette. And basically, we had no plan for distribution. Originally, it was kind of YouTube and, or Vimeo. And, or, yeah. Um, Vimeo, Vimeo. So uh, basically, we knew that with these big streaming services, that's another option as far as just a Hail Mary pass to these um, big distributors. And we sent a nine-page appeal to Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon. Netflix denied it. Hulu didn't respond. And Amazon sent back, uh, hey, we're going to uh, give you a collaboration with a rep. We really want to take on this project and present it as um, – something uh, diverse for our uh, streaming service. Even though they do short, show short films, they you have to be, there's a bunch of uh, hurdles that you have to go through. Yeah. If I were uh, just to be 17, uh, that's impossible because it's 21 age limit. But I mean, uh, to be the youngest filmmaker on any streaming service, as they signed me as, is a big label for the company and a big step up for their diversity and their... Uh, uh, filmmaking selection. And so we have uh, Amazon reps that really are following along every stage of post-production, editing, advertising, just monitoring. And they really take uh, they take ownership of that April 1st. Um, and they released a trailer, um, their social media pages, all that stuff about Subnivian. And we were luckily able to release a bunch of that beforehand and it's released actually now so the trailer's uh, available now oh not the trailer but uh we have social media at subnivianmovie.com mm -hmm. um on twitter facebook and instagram and a website and so basically um all that we branded ourselves, and we had a social right now we have about 15 members in post-production which is pretty good size yeah um, for sure, film's not bad, brother. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, some of them are college students, so it's great for them to get, start expanding. One of our PR managers is in college, so he's be able to expand his portfolio of press um, while he's releasing, um, getting press for this film itself. So um, it's I made sure that uh, with anyone I work with, that they're getting out of it just as much as I am uh, on their end. So um, that's why I love college students, because they actually show a lot of passion. They're not just in it for the paycheck. They're in it to further their careers and really start their careers just like me. Um, so. And then you, so, so then the film will be released June 12th, right? Uh, June 12th, uh, Amazon releases it on Prime Video. And May 21st, we have a premiere in Sandusky, Ohio, which is my hometown and locally here. And we also have a premiere uh, June 4th up in Marquette, Michigan. So if you're local to the Cleveland area, Toledo, just the Midwest in general, uh, you can grab tickets uh, April 1st when we release the trailer on Seed and Spark, which is our funding campaign that's going to fund mm -hmm. us through film festivals. Okay. So uh, we got a lot on our plate with all that too. That's um, insane. So but, well, again, another amazing part of the story is that you had an offer for four thousand dollars for a short film script, which yeah. again unheard of. I've never heard of anything like this. And you decided to pull a Frank Darabont. Uh, do you know who Frank Darabont is? I do not. The writer of Shawshank Redemption. I actually do. I have been enclosed for the last couple of years. I have actually visited visited. Um, the Shawshank Redemption shooting location. Oh, the prison? But, um, oh, have you seen yeah. the movie? Please tell me you've seen the movie. Yes, I have. Yes, okay, because if now we would have to end this interview right now, and I don't <laughs> want to do that to you. Okay, yeah. so but the story, so you know the story is when he wrote Shawshank Redemption, he was offered, I think it was like four or five million dollars for the script. And he said, nope, 
this is my ticket. And, <laughs> and he only took $250,000 and he got to direct the movie. He basically, yeah. And he basically gave that movie away, but it started his career. So on a much smaller scale, it, but in the scope of a, of a short film, you've done kind of the similar thing, but you also produced it yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, even though we have hardworking producers on the project, I do overlook everything just to make sure that uh, since this is the start of many of the college students and mine careers in the film industry, uh, of course, it's got to be quality. And we're only putting out that with Amazon looking over us, too. Right. So, um, yeah, it's it's just uh, I knew that when I denied it for four grand, I knew that it was someone's not going to offer four grand for a script just because they have a lot of cash. They're going to offer how much it's worth and how much it's going to put out. And I knew that I saw that in some Uh And I knew that if I did sell it to anyone else, they're not going to use uh they're going to use CGI and all that. They're not going to produce it practically. And I knew that if it did go that route, it would be an injustice to the film itself. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just such good action sequences. And uh, the story itself is just a solid um, emotional story that connects with me and um, anyone who's going to watch it. So um, I knew that this one film was something that I really needed to produce and uh, come out of my emotional uh, uh, bias and start to this uh, filmmaking career. So, um, it, you're remarkable, my friend. I have to tell you, you are an, you are an inspiration to to uh, to old dogs like me uh, in the business. <laughs> and 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 I, and I really hope people listening out there because now I'm going to be using you as an example of I'm like I don't care who you are, where you come from, you have no excuses. Look at Jonathan Perry's story. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah, that's the big thing about it is I do, I have seen a lot of friends and stuff like that uh, say, oh, I don't, I don't have money to produce that. Um, I'm, I'm not sitting on wads of cash. I, I started with just a paper and a pencil and maybe a laptop just to research the blog. And that's really all you need. Uh, um uh, really, it's just ideas, and then you build off that leverage. Leverage every step is a small step or big step, but it's just a step in general, uh, and it's just going to get you further or closer to uh, launching your filmmaking career. So, um, in my case, I'm going for a fast paced. I really want to create the next feature, which I already signed for, and um, I knew I wanted to get in the industry as fast as possible, take risks at a young age, because. I'm still in my uh, living with my parents. Uh, I'm still in high school. So, I mean, uh, no matter what, you're going to have food and shelter on the plate. That's all you need. And uh, food, shelter, and writing scripts is all you need to uh, start off. So, I mean, as long as you, um, and, and especially young people, even if you're uh, older, uh, as long as you have a steady job, uh, if you come home, no matter what, just write scripts and um, you have that steady uh, home life and actually supporting yourself, uh, you'll be able to launch a filmmaking career in no time as far as getting yourself out there online. So That's, uh, that's a remarkable. And I do have to ask you a question because I can't believe that you are 110% fearless. So I have to believe there had to be some fears along the way. Uh, every step of the way from writing these scripts when you were about to sell them to embarking on trying to make this first film of yours. How did you break through those fears? I mean, because it, it sounds like your parents kind of jumped on. They were supportive, but they really kind of took it seriously after you had already done a lot of the stuff. So a lot of the stuff you were doing kind of on your own. So I'm fascinated to find how you broke through that. So really, uh, it's using that leverage as far as... Um, I mean, you look at what you've done so far, and um, I mean, as far as fearless, making this film, it goes back to um, if anything fails, if I lose thousands of dollars, if I mess up really badly, I always have my, um, I'm still at home, I'm still here uh, living with my parents. I always have that comfort of home life, but I mean, uh, uh I mean, it's really of just why not? I mean, what's the uh, what's the repercussions if I were <laughs> to embark on this giant journey? Uh, even if it fails, 
I have my family to fall back on. I have just, uh, um, I'm still young. So, I mean, it's, um, why not? You, Basically it's like, why not? Yeah. You really learn from, uh, you also gotta, when I look at filmmakers also, um, I may not know some writers or directors, uh, sure. uh, but, um, uh, I look at how they started and what they failed at. Uh, and I really value failure over as far as succeeding because, uh, I mean, you can learn from failure as far as uh, what other filmmakers are not doing or um, as far as even if something were to go really bad, uh, I'm able to learn from that and build off that and show other people uh, just so they don't make the main, same mistake as me. And I think I received a lot of feedback like that uh, when I called up uh, all these industry people and they were able to uh, show me, hey, don't go this route. Uh, you want to steer clear of that it's dangerous at least if you're going to do this uh hire these type of people uh and so on so um even writing down your failures just so you don't mess them up again as far as uh in writing or just going through the process in general um we had a lot of fail like i there's so many repercussions or not repercussions but hurdles that you have to go through in order to make a film the size, we had to film on RE cameras, but you can't rent those cameras at 17. So I had to, <laughs> I would get calls from all these <laughs> rental companies uh, that, hey, you got to at least hook us up with someone that's over 18 to rent this. So uh, they ended up talking to my producers. Uh, but it, on set, it's it was weird because I had to become a different person as far as um, looking back on literally it took half a year just to get it through production. And, I mean, you're not going to let that go to waste. So, I mean, uh, we really used that drive to uh, we're getting this done no matter what. And I didn't think of myself as a 17-year-old on set. I thought of myself as more a director because I was I did all that work and put it through all that so I mean I might as well uh, put myself in a different mindset of leadership um, I also I uh, it's weird because um, I'm also an Eagle Scout so uh, a lot of, of that of course of course you're an Eagle Scout sir why wouldn't you be an Eagle Scout <laughs> a lot of that confidence came out of the, uh, the scouting career and just putting myself out there uh, and um, that's really my foundation was um, the scouting and um, not only home life, but school. Um, all those people backed me on this. Um, so I, the cool thing is there's actually, um, on a side note, there's a lot of parallels with Steven Spielberg that comes out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. That was also an Eagle Scout and started at like close to my age. So it was, I didn't realize that until like a month ago. Uh, and, uh, but I digress to uh, basically if you want to get something made, uh, just start making phone calls and uh, see what it takes to get it made. I would definitely uh, hire college students. Look at the leverage you already have in the industry. If you have none, then just start making it. Start small and build from there and show people that what you already have. And uh, even if they uh, doubt that you, like I signed contracts for the film, so I knew that no matter what these people are, uh, some of the union members are paid. So I mean, uh, no matter what these people are gonna be paid off of production, that will happen. So it's based off of that, that we really went forward with the project. And once you have, like, I think we had around 25 Free production crew members. Uh, once you have all those people working their independent departments, and you send trust upon them, they're going to do the best job that they can, and they're going to look at you and uh, just make sure that you're overlooking the whole entire production and um, stay in your lane. That was a big thing on set. I I had industry professionals. Um, I was trying to help a volunteer move a move a piece of wood. And uh, the guy's like, you're the director. You just need to sip coffee and bomb with your actors. And I was like, I'll take that job. 
Uh, so, uh, <laughs> stay in your lane, it, stay in your lane. But yeah, a uh, production went very smoothly as long as people just stayed in their lanes. So, I mean, that's a great thing about, uh, the onset was people, we planned so much in advance down to the minute that we, uh, all we had to do, everybody was trained on paperwork. They had like an inch thick of papers that, uh, they had ready on set, but it was, uh, Planning and communication was key. That uh, if you have those two things, uh, I mean, you're set as far as anything in making that film. Or now, did you uh, finance the film yourself? Okay, interesting note. <laughs> that ten thousand, that close to ten thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. Yet again, another blessing of being seventeen is that you can't hold a PayPal account until you're eighteen. So, I somehow the PayPal I got a call and they're like, "We're gonna hold this money till you're 18 and you can log back in." So uh, what? Uh, there was a big controversy as far as with PayPal and uh, cutting off my access to all that money I earned during scripts. But I knew that I was at a stage with Subnivian where I can't really focus on the legal problems with that. And even if that all blew out in the wind, I knew that uh, Subnivian, uh, I'm, I'm going to at least benefit with my personal leverage with Subnivian and getting it produced than anything that came out of script writing. So uh, I'm sure I'll get scholarships and stuff from Subnivian, but that's not really what it's about. It's about um, really connecting with the film and getting something made for personal leverage. So I can look back at it and say, hey, I did this why can't I take it a step up and do something bigger? Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So you still haven't touched the money from PayPal? I have not. I spent college funds on that and uh, I still haven't have access. And that's why we're having a funding campaign April 1st wow. to put us through film festivals. So if you want to uh, support or at least get connected with the film, we have not only incentives in our funding campaign, but we have, uh, for your listeners, uh, we're doing a program that actually goes through internships through our film. Mm-hmm. So your listeners, they could email subnivianmovie at gmail.com and they can uh, submit their resume or even if they don't have a resume, just so they can get connected with the film. They can, uh, we can start on, on a internship basis where they're able to put some work towards the film and getting it uh, in uh post-production just working and get some imdb credit uh get their first film uh in their name and all that so uh we're always accepting internships but we're also doing the incentives for our funding campaign where basically not only do you get tickets for the premiere but um also a load of things as far as merchandise and all that so basically uh if the campaign's successful which it is um and you can find out more information by texting 555-888 and texting Subnivian to that, um, uh, to our text free number. And basically, that will put us through film festivals. I'll be able to network and uh, really start my own directing my next short or whatever comes out of film festivals. And I know something will, because uh, I know we're going overseas too. Um to, uh, so it's going to release to, re- Amazon releases this first, but then they're going to let you do it on film festivals around the world. Yeah, yeah, um, very tricky. Uh, we actually made a decision with the Amazon rep recently with a family. We had to sit her down because they were like, "Okay." Uh, we handed them a rough cut of the film, and they're like, "Okay, um, we might want to actually bypass film festivals and try to." go for, or not bypass, but go for the bigger film festivals because we want to get Academy vote. Uh, and that was very shocking to me because I didn't expect getting Academy vote for my first short film, but then uh, you can't release it publicly on Amazon. They wouldn't be able to release it June 12th. We, had, uh, we have all our uh, content out already with June 12th, the expected date, May 21st, right. the premiere. So also on that end, I'm not looking to spend, we would have to go into 2021 Oscar Academy vote 
Yeah. Uh, so I can't spend two more years with the short film I've been as- obsessed with the last like one and a half years. So you just said, so, uh, uh, it's okay. Let's move on. I, I said, yeah, let, let it run the process. It will, it will get me where it needs to be. And, um, uh, it will be a success no matter what. So, uh, I know that, and I also knew that if they're considering Academy vote now, I still just have this short film. So we have, I have a whole career ahead of me. There's no doubt in my mind that I'll definitely see Academy vote in the next four years. Right. Which is very weird, but, um, it's not about that. I'm really just trying to, uh, I mean, it really has become a passion and, uh, it's, it's weird seeing what you wrote on paper, like visually in real life. Oh and yeah. What you it's, a, so much it's so time cool. In. It's so cool. Uh, it's, and to think that it's an actual job and all that. So, I mean, it's no doubt in my mind, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Um, what, now what's the biggest lesson you learned in this process? The biggest lesson is definitely, uh, the importance of communication and, basically you're networking. So, uh, no matter how you present yourself, as long as you have your networking and your, not only that, but, uh, the networking communication, uh, if you can communicate to all these industry members that I called up, if I were to perfect my communication, I would be able to sign on a few of those, uh, more easily, uh, and all that. So perfecting your communication in the industry and really negotiating with these, uh, fellow industry members, uh, helping you getting your film made really helps a lot. And then also it's just that, um, I mean, as long as you, the biggest lesson I've learned with this film and in my scripts in general, the work you put in is the work you get out. So I may write a um, filmmaker or a soundtrack for the entire movie two years ago. And I look back on that and I'm able to use that still. So um, no matter, that's just a weird example, but uh, (laughs) no matter uh, what you're working on with the film or in your script writing, any part of the process, you're going to see that later on if you don't use it and you're going to actually benefit from that. No matter what, uh, the harder you work, the more you work on that, no matter what, you're going to see it later and see it benefit you. So, uh, and I'm seeing that with, uh, my short film scripts, even though I haven't seen a dot of that money. Um, people, I, I had an industry member that worked on my short film that knew a director that, hit me up and uh, basically said, hey, I've taken a look at some of your scripts um, that uh, are licensed to other filmmakers, but they're secretly my scripts. Um, And basically, I want you to write a Hollywood movie, and there's eight other writers that are competing to write this same movie. I sent him a treatment uh, along with the eight other writers. I was selected by him to write the feature film very excited for that and that'll be coming yeah um i'm i think the starting budget for that is 1.5 million Mm -hmm. uh and that's i'm glad because i get to spend this summer just writing that movie like probably it's going to be around 300 pages and cut down from that um but i get to write that movie and research and actually experience uh because i'm not knowledgeable of a lot of the feature process of filmmaking short films are very different uh from my knowledge uh thus far so i get to write that and really uh make it dent in my career as far as uh starting with a feature and that'll probably if it's not in theaters we're not sure what route it's going uh Mm -hmm. it's still in treatment phase it could be in theaters depends how they want to take it um i'm glad that i get to write the script send it over and uh lay my head back and uh, watch it go into production. But you but just hired that. You just uh, hired gun for that as far as writing is concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just the writer for that film. Uh, and so I'll be able to see how a real feature film is made and be able to write it, go on set and actually 
uh, see what all this, uh, all uh, the scheduling process and all that uh, as far as a feature film. Uh, we had a professional set mm-hmm. for some Nibian, but it was uh, definitely not the size of a feature film that would be. So gotcha. um, I would be able to experience that at an early age and start in the industry. And I'll be writing my next film. I'll be, uh, again, on a note that the work you put in, your work you get out, I'll be writing another feature probably later in the summer that I'll be aiming to direct just so I can pitch it to producers when Subnivian goes into film festivals. So um, using all that leverage to your right. advantage is right. able to propel you through your filmmaking career and uh, really getting started. So. That's amazing, man. Listen, you've got one of the best heads on your shoulders of any f- young filmmaker I've ever spoken to. So it is re- remarkable. And I will also give you a, a one piece of advice. You need to reach out to Steven Spielberg and just tell him the story. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you are able to get this story to or have Amazon reach out to them and just say, hey, just want to let you know another number one Ohio kid you know, is making good. I thought you'd like to know what's going on. So when the movie's done, we'd love to send you a copy, Steven. I promise you he'll watch it. So, and that would be an insane, insane story. And if it does happen, you need to come back on the show and tell me how it goes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, So your viewers, uh, what they can do is with our funding campaign in April, Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting with Amazon is even though they're not a part of the funding campaign, they are a part of sending the trailer and all that. They're owning the film really in April. But they're able to buy digital copies of the movie pre advance in April and all that. Um, and uh, really, as far as sign scripts, anything from merchandise to uh, we have a, we really want to support the local businesses in Sadusky, mm-hmm. uh, where I live, and um, Marquette, where the filming location is. And we're giving business credit logos with Amazon. Uh, so they, if your viewers have a business, they want to get their logo in our credits, they can uh, purchase that and get their logo shown internationally with their movie. So it's That's all awesome. I'm trying to bring uh, with this production, really benefiting any uh, person possible uh, with the scale of this. In our premiere, uh, May 21st at the Sandusky Cinema uh, is the world premiere. And we also signed with Odessa, um, which is an EDM band, uh, if you don't know them. Uh, it's, it's, it's like the second uh, biggest EDM band around there. And so we're putting on a live event with them. They're doing our promotional sound mixing with Amazon. So if you text Subnivian to 555-888, you can see a behind-the-scenes trailer of the whole scope of the project. And that is uh, musically mixed by Odessa themselves. So, um, I mean, a lot has gone into this project, but a lot of work still has to be done with the funding campaign. Uh, and we're looking to your viewers also uh, to help support us on that and grab some merch. And uh, they'll definitely be seeing my name again uh, in the next four years. No, I think I think for many years to come, my friend. Um, again, I, man, you're hitting on all cylinders, and you've probably you're pretty much the personification of everything I preach about on my show. Uh, you know, never as such a young package, but yet still there. So I'm, uh, man, just congratulations on all your success. I'm going to ask you a few questions to ask all of my guests. Um, what advice would you give a filmmaker wanting to break into the business today, which you are trying to break into the business? So I'll reframe it as like, what, would, what advice would you give a filmmaker just trying to do something, trying to trying to, to do anything in this business? So uh, really, it, no matter what region you are, uh, there's going to be uh, a local film commission. Either look at all your options, look at your writing options, your producing options, your directing options, just editing uh, all the departments, uh, see what, if there's a local movie production, uh, looking up uh, how to write scripts, you can start there online. Uh, Online, there's a lot of opportunities. You can start making commercials for local businesses. Just uh, something that will give you a tiny bit of leverage, so then you can take the next step. And basically, uh, all those uh, steps are eventually going to lead you to the top of the staircase, breaking in the industry. So, 
um, it's luckily, uh, I think with writing my next uh, film, that will actually be an industry film. So uh, they'll be hiring actors and all that for um, the industry standards. So I think I'll have broken in by next by the end of this summer uh, officially into the industry when I go into colleges. But and you are going? To, are you going to go to film schools? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a big debate because uh, I think right. I'm going out to California soon to tour. Uh, a few colleges like USC, Stanford, sure. it it comes into uh, effect as far as cost nowadays uh, with film schools and all that. Because once again, if you have a sturdy housing uh, and you have something to fall back on when you go to bed at night with food on your plate uh, and a laptop just to type out a script, you're fine. But uh, with these expensive colleges, I'm sure I'll get scholarships, but through Subnivian, but it's all about uh, budgeting and all that uh, when I go to film school and how that affects my film career. And uh, I, I didn't expect to sign on for this next film for $1.5 million. But uh, now that I have, it's making film school look a lot nicer and uh, a lot easier to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you get into whatever film school you get into make sure that they're paying the bill because there's absolutely yeah. no reason why you should pay to go to usc that's just my opinion yeah. i've spoken at usc multiple times and it's a great it's a great film it's a great film school but it's not the cost is just ridiculous if you let you get scholarships yeah it's also coming into effect where we're trying to find a college that will teach me uh that's the other I'll thing learn. man like you uh, are, man you're so far ahead of film school brother i didn't want to say it but I don't know if it I, makes a lot of sense for you right now. I know it's weird because I, I, I hate the egotistical aspect that has to come with all this as far as signing with Amazon and all that. But uh, and nowadays I'm teaching at colleges in Ohio. They're film students. So it's kind of weird. It's like I'm not yeah. going to be able to – got to find a college that will actually – I'll learn from and actually go to class and um, gather some uh, information I can use in the film industry in film yeah. school and all that. So we'll talk, well, if uh, you want off air, we'll talk about your, your, your film school uh, options if you want. Um, so, yeah. uh, is there a book that had a really big impact in your life or career? Really? It wasn't, uh, I, I did read a few books, uh, as far as how to not make a short film that I read, um, and a few other books on directing visions and all that. Uh, I just uh, looked for as many books that will tell me how not to screw up. And uh, <laughs> good plan. Uh, that that's what I learned most from. Uh, but I did read. I try to read three film scripts a week as far as feature sc film scripts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's all in preparation to write my next uh, feature film. So that educates you enough um, as far as really getting first-hand experience, just print out a uh, feature film script or uh, look it up online. There's databases with all that. Um, and you can learn a lot from that. And uh, taking what you like and examining, breaking it down, um, and really learning from that firsthand, uh, that's really where the experience comes from. So um, I'll be reading film scripts probably till I die, but... Uh, Excellent. It's always in it. It's always you learn something from every script. So now, what uh, is the lesson that took you the longest to learn in 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 your life so far, or in the film business so far? Uh, that's a good question. The the it really was trying to because uh, with all this going on, uh, you look at. Uh, signing with Amazon and going, them trying to get into Academy Vote, you look at all that and uh, the hardest thing for me is like you put in so much work and you, I don't see myself as successful. Like mm -hmm. I see myself as just the work's paid off. So uh, it's, I don't know how to take good compliments and I need to uh, figure out because I, I don't feel anything when someone would tell me, like, Amazon comes up to you 
and says, Hey, this is an amazing film. And I'm like, okay, this is, I worked hard on it, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> stay like that, my friend. Stay like that. Don't, you don't have to just stay like that. Trust me. Cause yeah. if you're able to handle this kind of attention so far in your career, I promise you, if I was 17 and I would have had this attention, I would have been an absolute mess. So it, it's taken me a long time to get to where I am. So that you're doing it at 17 is God, man. God bless. It is hard with school, too, because, I mean, um, I do golf in the um, summertime and all that. But, uh, I mean, it's getting home and uh, working on a production till 2, 3 a.m. and waking up at 5 a.m. to go back to school. Uh, and I'll fall asleep in class and stuff. Um, usually, um, <laughs> it's ironic because, uh, my mom, she's like, why do you have a C in English class? I was like, well, I've been writing my next feature in English class during their entire presentations. And <laughs> so you'll be fine. Uh, you'll be fine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny because school and the film industry, they don't mix, uh, no, as far no. as the, High school. Uh, no, they, and, they don't. And some would argue not even film schools. But um, but yeah, I mean, look, if you know what you would love to do and you've got a good grasp on it, man, go for it yeah. and go for it 100%. And you seem to have a really good head on your shoulders. Um, and one last question. where What are your three favorite films of all time? That I've been trying to determine that for years now. But I know <laughs> but that. As of, as of today. As of today. As of today, I know that Interstellar is... Um, I may not be able to rank it, but I know three of my favorite. Uh, okay. I know Interstellar's on there. A lot of Christopher Nolan, actually. Um, we can go with Dunkirk was on there. Um, and um, I know the the Dark Knight in general. Uh, those Christopher Nolan films, um, I, I don't just watch Christopher Nolan, but... Uh, <laughs> I, well, you dress, I really, you dress like him, sir. <laughs> That's how he dresses. That's how he dresses on set. Uh, the, well, uh, I think there's a lot you can learn from him in general. And what I do, uh, what I do is actually I look at like David Fincher. I take yeah. bits of his directing styles and bits of Chris Nolan's, and I mold it into my own. Where David Fincher, uh, as far as his aspects of perfectionism uh, and getting the camera, cinematography, and all that. And you mix that with Christopher Nolan's uh, script writing abilities, timing and all that, uh, storylines, uh, you get something that manifests out of Subnivian that really is something original and something that um, is the best of both worlds and something I admire. So it's really I'm able to take and learn from directors I um, learn from online and all that and take it into my own aspects and becoming the director um i will in the future so good for you man and those are those are not those are, those guys aren't bad they're not bad i have to say yeah. <laughs> they're not a bad combination I, there was a point in time where i it was two months before i shot some nivian a couple months before i saw like uh, a movie actually in theater so uh last week i actually saw a movie and uh in theaters and not seeing a movie for four months in theaters and then seeing a movie, it's like, it's, it's the, the most amazing feeling being in that theater. Just, um, I, 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 know the feeling. I mean, yeah, it's words can't describe it, but, um, I got to see more. I isolated myself so much these last months with some Nivian. Um, <laughs> That you can't, uh, yeah, but, I got, I got you, man. I got you. Now, where can people find uh, you and about Subnivian and uh, your work? So Subnivian is on all social media at Subnivian Movie on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. They also have a website SubnivianMovie dot com. They can find me at JonThePerryFilms dot com, and they can actually find the movie Subnivian if you join the text free number. Uh, Text Subnivian to five 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 eight eight eight, and you get a behind the scenes uh, trailer of the whole scope of the project. See me in action. See what it was like on set, and um, that also has links to social media. And, and how do you spell really, Subnivian so everybody listening can know how to spell it? Subnivian uh, 
it actually means to be submerged under a layer of snow or residing under. Uh-huh. And uh, that is spelled S-U-B-N-I-V-E-A-N. So okay. um, basically, they can get ready for our funding campaign in April 1st, and uh, that really will propel us through film festivals, and we'll, uh, we might be able to come to your local area depending upon uh, how successful that campaign is, campaign is uh, and how much funds we raise. We're going for around 13000 which is, uh, we'll there's fine. also some crew payments in there, uh, mixed in with film festivals that counts for travel. Um, and maybe I'll be able to meet some of your viewers in the cities and they'll be able to see some Nivian in theaters and I uh, really get the full experience. That's awesome, it's, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's, listen, Jonathan, you've been an absolute inspiration, uh, not only to me, but I'm sure to everybody listening uh, and watching on the show right now. So thank you again so much. You are the personification of what I preach about on the show. And uh, really, man, congrats on all your success. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future, brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me.